Welcome to my humble little office. My name is R. Keith Andrews. I am a spiritual guide and paranormal adept. The journey continues today on July 25th, 2022 at approximately 6.17 a.m. PST. It is way past due for people to start really paying attention to what's going on around them. And I am not referring to the news. Okay, and when I mean news, I'm not referring to mainstream, I'm not referring to the social media, none of it. I'm referring to right around you. Now, you know, the reason I call myself a spiritual guide is because the tools that I offer are the same ones that I personally am using right now when they apply to me. Okay, I'm not the best of the best by any functional stretch. In all fairness, I'm no better than anybody else. You know, I've got strengths and weaknesses just like you do. Now, I, I return to this world, to this lifetime, for one primary purpose. And that is to remind virtually everybody that working together, we can make this a better world. Okay, actually, in all fairness, it was to remind everybody in existence that working together, we can make this a better world for virtually everybody. Okay, now there will be people who object. Okay, but we have to realize a couple of things. First and foremost, there are so many similarities that we've got to start focusing on. Okay, and the decisions people are making right now are absolutely short-sighted, in my opinion. Okay, so society right now is hanging down a very simple path. It's blatant for anybody to see. It is heading down the same road that Rome went down. When it started to fall. Now, I'm not talking about looking into the history books. Because I'll tell you, in case you hadn't noticed. History is written by the people in power. Okay. The, the history of a war is written by the victors. Because for some bizarre reason, the people that die usually don't have any say. Okay. Now, don't get me wrong. There are there are extenuating circumstances. I'm probably one of the few that's a, that is very much as an extenuating circumstance. Okay, but that's a whole different issue. It doesn't make me better or worse. It just means I've got a different got access to different sets of memories. Now, society itself has got to shift gears, and we've got to start looking at the reality of what you're dealing with. Okay. Your responsibility, first and foremost, you must be true to you first. Now, you absolutely have free will. You've got freedom of choice. What you don't have is freedom of consequence of said choices. Okay, this is where the three laws that I follow, and I only follow three. Be true to yourself first. Do unto others as you desire them to do unto you. Energy out, energy in. Now, if you like the video, do give us a thumbs up, and please do subscribe to the, into the channel and share the daylights out of it, because this message is critical at this point. Okay, we have to get away from this idea of listening to people telling you to be afraid of everything. Okay, I mean, let's look at the logic. Is fearing your creator going to help you? Is it going to do you any good at all? If your creator is such a vindictive and vindictive and vengeful individual, then why pray tell are you worried about? Because he'll kill you like that. Okay. If you're if you're fe fearful of everything out there, you're not going to live. Okay. You know, you may exist, but if you're following a spiritual guide that turns around. And I am referring to specific, to more accurately. I mean, it's all inclusive. If your parents are telling you you have to fear things, okay. If your religious leaders are saying fear everything, if you live your life in fear, you're going to have problems. This is just a blanket outcome, okay. Fear is what starts the road down depression down lethargy, etc., etc., where you just don't make any progress. You know, if it's all going to be bad, why bother? And for those of you that have this brilliant idea that thinking is as bad as doing, think of this. How many movies have you seen 
have you even heard of? Never mind whether you watch them. How many movies have you watched where they show the world being blown apart and yet the world's still here? How many worlds, how many movies are out there that show mankind collapsing completely and us going and mankind going back to, to a barbaric state? And yet we still are semi civilized. We've got technological wonders. Now, there was a post the other day on Facebook, yesterday, I think I saw it, that was priceless. You know, somebody goes, of course aliens exist. Where do you think we got cell phones from? Well, that's a real brilliant question. But like I mentioned, it's, you know, in my opinion, it's real simple. Humans are the ones responsible for the technological outcome, outcomes and technological advances. Now, yes, we absolutely... Humans and every other, every every other evolving and evolving race takes and it takes their their cues. They take inspiration from what they witness. Okay, the helicopter, I believe, it was Leonardo da Vinci, looked at the way an oak leaf fall on lands and took that as an indicator, as a as inspiration to develop. The and it, might, it, it was either Da Vinci or Michelangelo, and I really don't recall which. Uh, okay, but they took the uh, the falling and the dropping oak leaf as a way of explaining how uh, of calculating how to make a helicopter. Okay, people do absolutely reverse engineer. Okay, the computer is based on the human brain. Okay, now in all fairness, the human brain still operates faster. But what this means is it's the same with the computer. Garbage in, garbage out. You keep pumping garbage into your brain, you're going to keep pumping garbage out. Okay, it's that simple. Now, the, the reality of it is we still have the ability to turn this around. But you got to start taking responsibility for your own actions. Okay. Now, to that end. And I think I put it out of reach, didn't I? I did. To that end, I figured out where it comes from because of the fact that I look at, at, when I talk about looking at business, I'm not talking about just what you're selling to other people. You run your home like a, your house, like a business as well. You've still got to pay attention to the, to the finances. The finances don't care how you're feeling. You notice if you get ill and go to the hospital, the power bill still keeps coming. The phone bill still keeps coming. You up and die and you haven't got things in order, the power bill still keeps on coming. Okay. And that's one of those things we all have in common. You're all going to die. Okay, now you're not going to, there's a lot of you that will argue this point, and that's okay. But I will tell you, when you go, you know, when you die, whether you believe you're going to heaven, to hell, to, you know, to lay in a box until your body rots and goes away, it doesn't matter. They're all viable options. And quite frankly, been there, done that, they're all real. The thing you don't understand, and you're not going to remember this when you die anyway, Okay, is that you're not stuck there? Okay, this is not a B. This is not a the end of the road. You're stuck with that with whatever you believe. Even once you die, you will continue to gain wisdom. Okay, but while you're alive, while you're in corporeal form, it is up to you to really look in the mirror and go. Am I content with the way my world is going? Am I content with the people I'm around? Okay. Now, use your common sense. You don't have to agree with all the rules. But you must follow the laws of the land in which you are. Now, rest assured, there are some of you that are, are in your early teens and your later teens going, I don't like the rules of the house, so I'm not going to follow them. I'll tell you. It is one of the most organized places you're going to be. Because once you get out there, if you haven't actually figured things out, and this is why I encourage parents to sit down with their kids and go, here's the way the finances are working. Here's a real-time problem. 
if you don't teach your kids how to handle finances by showing them real-time interaction. What you're condemning them to is going through the same mess you went through. Maybe different circumstances, but the same, the outcome is the same. Okay. And, you know, I heard of one, one lad the other day that the parents had tried to, had tried to instill the idea of keep, you know, of keep the, the house and keep your living area in order. Okay. Well, unfortunately, he didn't, he, this individual did not pay total attention and got hit with a notice that their house had gotten to their apartment, had become bad enough in the, in the opinion of the landlord as to tell them, either get the house cleaned up or you're being evicted. Now, fortunately, most parents won't evict their own kids out of the house just because the bedroom isn't, isn't clean. But the reality is it can happen in the real world, and it does happen in the real world. Now, everyone in existence has this other issue in common. You learn by experience. Okay, yes, people can tell you, don't do that, it's a bad idea. But until you get that emotional imperative right here in your heart, the odds of you changing direction are pretty limited. Okay. I have not done as well as I should have done. It should have done in my eyes, not in anybody else's. However, I now have a battle plan laid out where everything will continue to grow. Okay. And will continue to climb. I'll know in, well, today is the 25th. So, in a week, I'll know exactly where I'm standing, whether or not I'm on the right track. Well, I know I'm on the right track. Okay. I somehow have a question. I've got to go through it today to figure out whether I'm going to hit my goal of, you know, whether I'm going to hit my goal of 3,800 by the end of this month. Okay. I'm not entirely certain what I've got at this point. Let's see. I've got what has come in. Just taking a quick look while this is a live recording, meaning all I do is when I get done, I go back and double check the double check the date that I put that I said, and make sure that's right. If that's right, I carry on just post it as is. Okay, now when I look at this, I am looking at eight, ten, nineteen. So I'll be looking at trying. I'm going to be cutting it close. I'm going to be cutting it very close to the 38. I may not break it, but we'll figure that out shortly. Okay, because when it comes to money, you have to have an idea of what you require. Now, for me to run my household, it runs me about 2,500. Okay, and as long as I'm hitting that, I will be on the upswing. Okay, but at this point, I know exactly where I'm heading, and this is what you've got to figure out. Are you content with where your life is? If not, do you know how to go about shifting the energy in your life to make certain that you can reclaim power over your own life? Talk about repeating yourself often about the word life, but it is yours. Okay. You know, the, the way I look at it, and what did I do here? Um... And uh, there it is. See, I've just had my, you know, my business cards. Okay, I've just had redesigned. I'll have them back again sometime next week, I think. Okay, but these I got done from Vista. Okay, this is where I got these done. Ten bucks, and this is what I got, which is great. Okay, and they can produce them that way. I chose to go a much more expensive route. Okay. I chose to support my local business now and my local my local community. They do not have the printing facilities or the the volume ability to bring the cost down anywhere near this. Okay. For this it cost me ten and ten bucks. Okay. And if you've ever seen them, it's not a bad uh, it's not a bad setup. Okay, double-sided, 10 bucks, 
Okay, that's where I got these. To get the same amount done, it's going to cost me roughly 90. Now, this would seem like a bad investment until you realize two major factors. One, you're, I'm supporting local business. So my local community is getting the money, not some billionaire somewhere else, but somebody in the local community that require that is striving to make a living for themselves. Okay, now this is the call on my part. You know, what do you do if you can't afford it? Well, you do exactly what I did. I couldn't afford it, so I went to a, into a less expensive, bigger mogul to pay to get what I required done. Well, news. Okay, I used to, I used to, I, I used to, I used to, yeah, that's good. Remember that thing about live recording? I used to print my own business cards, but I didn't like the look of them. Okay, they were pretty, pretty shoddy. I don't have a copy of them right now, but they were pretty shoddy. So I went to a company. Couldn't afford much, so I pay. I went for the least expensive I could get. Now, based on the rule, on the guidelines that I work with, okay, and that I have put in, believe in yourself and follow your dreams, and believe in your business and follow your dreams. Based on the tools that I put in there, okay, these are tools I personally use. I'm now at a point where I can take that, where I can take that, that investment, and I can go, okay, I'm going to spend more on the business cards. Now, business cards are an expense. They're a throwaway expense. They really are, okay, because you hand them out and hope somebody actually calls you, which is the idea. Now, what you'll find over the next couple of days in my case, because I'm changing the energy of the whole nine yards in my in my world. Okay. My I'm clearing out these shelves over here. Those are inventory and they're staying that way. Okay. But these other shelves I'm clearing out, and I've already got the shelf up here. This one right oh, you can't see it. That shelf right up here is already cleared off and all it's got is my active office stuff. Okay. And this is a question of taking the energy in your office, wherever you work on your finances, and redirecting it so that it runs smoothly. Where do you start? That's the easy part. Right where you are. Again, another similarity we all have in common. Okay. Is we all are right here right now, and this is the only time in existence that you can ever do anything. Now, I talked to one person the other day that, uh, that literally told me, they made a comment. It was like, I go back in time all, you know, I go back all the time. You know, I go back in time and change things I did wrong. Now, if that were, in fact, a reality, this world would be in total chaos, it would be in worse chaos than it is. Because things would continue to shift. Because you can bet your bottom dollar, if one person can do it, everybody can do it. Okay, everybody's got the potential. And Lord, you know, Lord knows there's this brilliant statement that's out there. You know, that goes, if I knew then what I know now, my life would be different. Well, it absolutely would be. Okay, but you didn't, and it isn't. So how you got to where you are, you're in the same boat as everybody out there. Every single person has the same boat and has the same boat to deal with. They are here, right here, right now, and whatever they did in the past is what led them to be who they are today. Now, this does not condemn you to being that same person tomorrow. Right now, I'm at a point where I know where my finances are in time, and I think I shot myself in the foot with this one. I kept looking at Colonel Sanders and going, well, he was 65 when he started, when he really made his turn. You know, and I kept looking at that. I got lots of time, which I technically do. I'm 59. I'm no longer interested in waiting until I'm 65. I'm just not interested in it. Okay. Now, this is a comment. If you're listening, if you know, and you pass this on to one of the big moguls, this message is actually for the big moguls, okay? Especially where it comes to things like addictions. If you, desire, if you truly desire 
thing is addiction to collapse. If you're really interested in it, like, and I will pick on the, in this case, I will absolutely pick on the, on the cigarette, on the cigarette companies. If you really want people to stop being, being addicted and yet desire your product to still be sold, because I, I understand, you know, we do require a, you've got to have a barter system. Money is just simply another form of barter. That's all. It's just easier, in my opinion, to carry a $10 bill than it is to drag a cow around with you. But if you really desire to help with the addiction problem, find a way, number one, to remove the addictive chemicals you're pumping into the cigarettes, okay, and find a way to make them taste better. Because people will go for things that taste better, and they will go out of their way to buy them. Okay. Alter the flavor, not the addiction. I mean, Coca-Cola, a century, centuries back, well, probably a century ago. <coughs> Coca-Cola, from my understanding, way back, okay, added an addictive sub substance to the drink. To make people want to buy it. I'm telling you, if you change the flavor of things to one that people like, okay, you will get sales. It's the same as if you change the appearance of the clothing you're buying that you're making. People will buy it. Now, I, and it really is a marketing, it's a, a phenomenal marketing process. You know, you go back centuries, the rose was considered a weed. And yet now everybody looks at a rose and goes, oh, they're so beautiful. It was marketing. Same thing applies with diamonds. Okay, it's a marketing issue. And this is where I've run into a major problem. Okay, because marketing is not my strong suit. And I should stop telling myself that. You know, I found that by telling myself I had a lousy memory for names, it kept my memory for names at bay. So my memory for names is now getting better because I keep telling myself it's getting better. And that brings us back around to this other similarity that everyone, virtually everyone in existence has. Okay, if you whether you tell yourself you're capable of doing something or you tell yourself you're not, either way you're inevitably going to prove yourself correct. Now you may not have the know the know how to do certain things. Lord knows, mechanical work, one of the biggest problems with it is that, frankly, it doesn't interest me. Remember that thing about that heartfelt imperative? Okay, I don't have the interest to go and, re and research cars. I went through a questionnaire the other day in, in, you know, in reference to that. I went through a questionnaire, a quiz on Facebook. Okay, that was asking how much of the, how many different parts of cars did you know? And I was amazed at how many parts I actually knew. So my problem in, with car, with auto mechanics, is not that I cannot learn it. It literally is, I've got no interest in it. Okay, and this is why. When you go into something, it, whether you believe you're capable of doing it or not, you're pretty much, you're pretty much going to prove yourself correctly. So, with that in mind, I've got seven books. If you look at the bottom of this video, you'll find the seven books. Now, I will be changing the, the prices on it. Um, as a matter of fact, they should be changed today. Because with the increase in the cost of printing and the calculations I ran, I'm not even making enough profit on the books to be able to sell all of them and have enough to, to purchase another batch. Okay. I cannot maintain that man, that maneuver, so I'm stopping it effective immediately. Okay, that's just the way that's going to go. And yes, to that end, I will be going on to on to Facebook and the other things I'm on, as in Twitter and LinkedIn, and posting. This is what the new price is. This is what the book is. Here's the synopsis of it. Here's the you know. Here, here's the synopsis, and here's the price. Okay, because I just spent all day yesterday running through and checking numbers to make sure that I can handle 
I don't have to change anything, even at the point of bringing in a million dollars a month. Okay, now that sounds pretty ambitious when you think I might am making like less than three, less than less than four grand right now. I don't know if I'll break the thirty-eight yet this month. So setting up my my business strategy to handle a million dollars a month coming in. You've got to realize this is not going to happen overnight, but it is the path that I'm going to follow. It's the one I'm going to keep pushing at. But I do know for an absolute certainty that one of my weak points has been marketing. Okay, being rather reclusive to start with. Okay, there is there are problems with that because the best books, the best guidance in the world is absolutely useless if nobody knows about it. And the worst, the worst guidance in the world is absolutely devastating, especially if everybody knows where to find it. Okay, I've seen people quote passages from the past, things that people did and gone, this is the way it works. Well, I'm telling you, if it worked that way, society wouldn't be in the shambles it's in right now. If you're taught to fear, if everybody is, is taught to fear everything, and you're taught that money is the root of all evil. Number one, point blank, and I, I will, this is from my heart. My personal belief is if you're being taught that money is the root of all evil, you're being lied to. Okay, because take a look at it. Money itself is a, is a agreed upon method of barter, period. Okay. And that's just the way it is. You know, it's not a question of it being a root of all evil. It is a, man, a method of, ex, of expressing greed, which is an evil thing. Evil, in my opinion, boils down to doing something to benefit yourself at the expense of others. That's an evil act, okay, in my opinion. Now, with that in mind, I will, I will be back again tomorrow, but until then, take care of yourselves and each other, and for pity's sakes, stay positive.